48 hours, Mike Tyson will get into a ring for perhaps the most important fight of his life. Tonight, we'll look at the past, the present, and the future of one of the most compelling and enigmatic athletes of all time, Iron Mike Tyson. And when you lose, it hurts. If you lost your first fight for $10,000, or if you lost a fight for $20 million, the idea of losing, you know, affects everyone. I remember after the fight, you weren't even aware that you lost. No, I was pretty much um, obliviated. Yeah, I didn't know what was going on. Is it true you asked John Horn, your manager, one of your co-managers, what round did I knock him out in? No, I thought, I, yeah, of course I thought I knocked him out. But then John said, no, Mike, trust me, you don't know what happened here. Relax. I said, no, 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 I'm okay. And he said, no, Mike, just relax for a minute. Cool, sit down for a minute, and I'll explain to you what happened. And when he told you, how did you feel? What the hell? <laughs> It'd be another day. I've interviewed you seven, eight times, and I remember you saying, I lose, I die. Mm -hmm. They'd have to kill me to lo make me lose in the ring. I remember you telling well, me. Well, I fight till I can't fight anymore, you know what I mean? If a situation like that happens and you get hurt, but I'm a strong believer, if you fight, you fight to the end, you know what I mean? You don't be afraid. Some guys get hit hard, and they, they lay down because they don't want to take a beating. Real fighters take their beating like a man because anything can happen. What do you fear these days? Do you fear anything in the ring these days? Well, only I say it's fear because it's that adrenaline and your, your heart's boiling and you're just so psyched and it's your imagination playing so many absurd tricks with you. The guy becomes so much bigger. He becomes so much better, faster. Everything he does is so much better than you. And then when you're in the ring, you find out he's just a man like you with two arms and legs. And you, the preparation you put in here and from your past performance, you know why I'm the greatest fighter in the world. And this is my domain. It's just I refuse to believe that anyone could beat me. Are you concerned that doubt has crept into your psyche? Any doubt anywhere? I know you said you've never lost confidence. No. But is there anywhere in your psyche, Mike, doubt? I always have doubt because um, without doubt, a person who's secured in their position, you know what I mean, is in, is in position to lose their security because... You can't, um, you can't go in a situation with 100% security because then you, you leave open, you leave things open for mistakes because um, you're totally secured to everything. You're not expecting anything because you're totally secured in everything. So you think in your mind, this is secured when it's not necessarily secured because it's So belief. doubt is a good thing? Oh, doubt is beautiful. And doubt you have? Oh, yeah, of course I keep a certain amount of doubt on me, yes. And fear, because you said yeah. fear once upon a time, you told me fear is my friend. You, you just have to um, be aware of your situation. I mean, people say there's no one that ever fight, fought, or no one ever played back, would never have the slight amount of doubt in the back of their mind, and that caused them to perform at a better level because there's a possibility these people can beat me. But it didn't seem like you had a lot of doubt against Holyfield the first fight. Well, it looked like you, you base, I, I'm going to tell you what I thought. I thought you wanted to knock him out with the first punch. Mm -hmm. Well, I tried. You know what I mean? That was my mistake. Um, believing a lot of um, newspaper clippings. But he, he's a hell of a fighter. I just have a great deal of respect for him as a fighter. And I'm just glad to have this opportunity. And we're going to see if he's really a big boy now. And what if you were to lose? Huh? What if you were to lose? I can't conceive myself looking, losing. It has to happen for me to even comment on it. You're that sure? Yeah. The eye of the tiger. Do you have the eye of the tiger? Well, I don't know necessarily what it means as far as me and I know I want to win. That's having an eye of the tiger, yeah. I'm sure everybody wants to win. Everybody goes in there with the eye of the tiger, but even the tiger loses, even the tiger becomes defeated, the tiger becomes frustrated. You know what I mean? And he fought his heart out. You didn't win, but you showed your heart, your big heart. Fighters, that's, that's all we have. That's what fighters have. That's why we're famous. We're, we're there to show our heart, our determination. We're there to, to spill our blood. That's what we're there for. We did to lose our blood and lose our whatever it is, our, our frame of mind, our, our just soul. We did this. That's what we did. We, if we're there for anything else, we're in the wrong business. If we think we're there just to look good and gain fans, no, that's not there. We're there to suffer. We're there to die. You said you've never before believed that he was the fight, never dreamed that he was the fighter he was, the awesome counterpuncher that he mm -hmm. is. How do you counterattack a counterpuncher? Well, I'm going to be pretty... Um, I'm pretty, pretty up to date next time. I'm not afraid to give, you know, I'm a man. I'm not afraid to give credit what credit is done, do. But um, I was just, um, I never had any idea he could fight as well as he did.
You can dust and dust, but you'll never get your home dust-free with these old-fashioned things. They just push the dust around. But now there's the Magna Duster, the incredible duster that works like a magnet. This extraordinary duster actually creates an electrical charge that attracts dust like a magnet. Look, you can actually see the dust as it's pulled off the surface and into the Magna Duster. Incredible! Watch again as the dust jumps off the table and into the Magna Duster. Those other dusters just can't get these shutters clean. But Magna Duster conforms to the tightest places, grabbing onto the dirt and holding it tight. Watch it work on these mini blinds, pulling the dust out of those hard to reach places just like a magnet. It's much faster than other methods. A table full of collectibles can be such a chore, but not anymore. The fibers actually reach out and grab the dust without disturbing a thing. Use it on all your electronics. Pull dust right off the TV. Magna Duster gets into those tight places other dusters can't go. Now you can dust your whole house in half the time. It's amazing. And the soft fibers come clean with soap and water. Try that with your feather duster. Call and get your Magna Duster today. Only $19.95 on this exclusive TV offer. But wait, you'll also get a second Magna Duster. Plus, we'll include the extended handle. Perfect for those hard to reach places. And the Magna Duster is bendable, so you clean the top of ceiling fans or under the cabinets. There's more. You also get the mini Magna Duster. Great for the car, perfect for the office. It's Magna Duster, the complete kit for the amazing price of just $19.95. It really is a dust magnet. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-455-2259. The incredible Magna Duster is just $19.95. Call 1-800-455-2259 or send check or money order to this address. But for a faster delivery, call right now. 1-800-455-2259. Mike Tyson has been jailed or in reform school for part of his young life, including three years in a federal prison for rape. Yet eight years ago, he told us it wasn't likely it would ever happen again. Larry Holmes said uh, in the last year, it, 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 about a year ago, right before your fight with him, that there was no doubt in his mind that you would return to jail. In the last six months with all of it, the slapping incidents, the late night brawls, the alleged tirades with Robin, uh, the nasty altercations with TV cameras, do you think you were ever in danger of actually going back to jail? No, not at all. Not at all. How has real life tested you, though, in ways that boxing couldn't? Because I'm dealing, you know, I mean, inside I'm totally in control of the situation. Ring, you know, there's just a, a certain amount of moderation as far as discipline is concerned. You know what I mean? You're in control in the ring. You're something that you're prepared for. You're training months and months for, and then you go in there and then it's like a, a diagram. Everything's written out, and you have everything's planned to do. Outside, it's just the unexpected so constantly, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? lurking around and you just you don't know what's going to happen day by day that's like you count the lord for your blessings because you're really not promised tomorrow and anything can happen there are two mike tysons clearly maybe more than you know i mean we're all different people at different particular times in our life that certain things may cause us to um act a certain way be a different individual you couldn't deal with someone that's very hostile in the way you're dealing with me now you have to deal with them in a different way if you had an appetite for confrontation of course you would deal with them totally differently. How do you take the past, make it work for the present, and be better for the future? Well, we learn from our mistakes in the past, and we hopefully we won't, we won't repeat them in the future. Basically, um, you know, you're getting a little troubles here and there, but then again, you think about it, if somebody took a magnifying glass and just penetrated on you and looked in every little thing and every little dirt you did, people are bound to find some dirt and make something out of this, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I can't help the fact of who I am. I just enjoy being myself. Do you feel your life's been a success? Uh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Obviously a boxing success, clearly. Yeah. Monetarily, you can't ask for more. But do you feel your life has been a success? It depends on how you um, define success. How do you define success? I don't know. Um, perhaps just being happy with your kid. I wish my mother was alive to see me. I wish Custom Model was alive to see me. Um, there's a very a couple of my friends who are dead now, not around, or no longer with us, are probably in prison for the rest of their life. I wish they were around. Do you think you're a good person? I think I'm incredible. Because most people are just well behaved, you know what I mean? They, just, they know what people want to hear, want to say, oh, I love God, and God is this, God is that, you know what I mean? Um, we're not perfect, and if we were perfect, God would get rid of all of us and put un imperfect people on the earth, you know what I mean? Because that's a part of growth. That's how you become, reach your 
your high your high your highest level of understanding by making these mistakes in the past where you won't hopefully won't make them in the future what are you proudest of you said you 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 feel you're an incredible person incredibly good person uh -huh. what are you proudest of mike tyson that um that i'm able i'm never um conceded to the extent that i'm a big-headed guy and i talk bad about i'm always um considerate for humble people because i always i know that feeling like the people that um that in prison the people used to get out of prison no one cares about no one loves and i i always feel a infinity with those people because i was one of those people that probably still am you know i mean just because of my status people who know who i am but i'm just uh i'm just I have a close relationship with those people and people say why you get these bums money because not I, our family was homeless and i used, i just remember that situation and it's just you look at me if anybody if i can make it i used to think if i can make it i was in the streets all my life if i can make it anyone can make it that's how come i always hang around these neighborhoods and i tell these guys listen man hang out touch me man you know i can't give you this is a big world i can't put my, my arms around the whole world but look at it, if i can make it not necessarily you have to be a boxer but just break your butt to go on to school or else just become some kind of athlete you got the altitude aptitude for it but don't um just don't be lazy you could at young age you could do anything you want what would you have done differently? There's some obvious things we know, but generally speaking, what do you, what would you say you wish you could do over again? I wish I was um, better as a ch as a child with my parents. Um, I just wasn't a good child. Obedient? Yeah, I was very law-abiding. Rebellious. I was very rebellious, and I didn't have. I was just a hungry kid. And I, when you're hungry, you don't have respect for civilization, law, authority, or human life. I was just. Um, Listen, I come from a neighborhood, the worse, the, the worse you are, the more compliments you get. And Especially the, these days. Yeah, that's the reality. I don't know about now, but where I came from, the more crimes you committed, the more pats you got on your back. Not how many A's you brought home when you got a pat on your back. He comes now. Coach, you seemed a little upset out there. My guys are busting their butts out there. And you people are sitting on yours, watching the game on this pathetic beauty little screen. Come to Gabowitz. Buy any Mitsubishi big screen, VCR, audio, or home theater system and pay absolutely nothing for 12 months. Zero down, zero payment, zero interest, zero accrued interest. Now get out there and go big! At Gabowitz in East Brunswick. I'm Lynn Doyle of Comcast Newsmakers, inviting you to join me as I host a new show on the Comcast Network. It's your call lets you call in and talk to the newsmakers. So please join me every Monday night at 6.30 on the Comcast Network. Games continue on day six of this most excellent event. Tonight, catch some bicycle stunt jumping. What a twister. Street luge. Look, Mom, no brakes. And skateboarding vert. Hey, it's our pal Tony Hawk. Good luck, Tony. The X Games, tonight at 8.30, only on ESPN. That's all I'm here for, is to fight. I guess you get paid, give the people their money's worth, and go home. You get lonely? Yeah, more or less. What do you get lonely for, of? Because I feel like I should be, you know, out roaming the streets, you know, like lonely kids. <laughs> I'm always doing a business. It's funny because, you know what I mean? When you're in a professional business, you know, you have, it's like obligations. And it's, like I was saying before, it's like you sold your soul to the devil. You know what I mean? Like if you want to get out of it, but you can't. The but you're your still life. a young guy to feel that way. That, that's a that's a pretty you know that's that's for late in a career to yeah, feel but that. It's funny because I do. You think that's healthy uh, for a guy know. that for, for a guy that wants to be in the game a long time? Well, who knows? Like we know the devil's on our shoulder, but you know I'm not doing nothing. I'm not doing what you tell me to do. I'm not gonna go over there and rob that man and kill that person. No, all right, that's cool. That's all right though. You can hang around as long as I know you're here. It's cool. Raging Bull. Why did you relate? to Jake LaMotta and De Niro's portrayal of Jake LaMotta? Uh, it's very simple, you know what I mean? It's coming from that kind of environment um, and just being dumped on most of the time, you know, in your life, you know, you think you have a friend and they're really talking behind your back because you see how they talk about other people when they talk, when they see him, hey, how you doing, Joey? It's good seeing you. Then, uh, wasn't Joey such a 
bum, or wasn't he such a jerk for making a decision with his girl, or, and you just know what they're saying about you, and you know, every time there's a time of despair, they're never there for good times, instead they're there, it's for monetary reasons, they have their own um, interior motives, and we always say, um, it's just frustrating, it's, and it's mean, it's angry, and you're frustrated at everybody, you just want to succeed and succeed, and let them know that you're not a bum, and you're somebody special, and I, I just related to that movie so well. It's one of the books that's on your night table, and the book is called The Maverick Mindset. And it says, the subtext, the journey from fear to freedom. Why is that book appealing to you? Um, it, was, I, it was an interesting book, I thought, and it was a gift from someone. And I just thought um, I would read through a lot of synopsis of the book. And it was, it was interesting. And, it, and the person that told me said he, would, um, he thought that I would find that book interesting. And, and it, was, it was pretty interesting. But what does that mean, the journey from fear to freedom, to you personally? Um, it's just overcoming situations that you believe that were uh, unable to be overcome. I, I, that's, what I, that's how I take it. People have so, so many different variations that you can take it. But I always see it as something that, um, that you never, a boundary which you never cross because of that fear factor. And by fear, by, by overcoming your fears, just by crossing it and conquering it, and not just necessarily conquering it, because it's sometimes normally it's just no, it's inconceivable, most of the things that we fear. And that we never really conquer it. Like God is inconceivable. We don't see him, but we believe in it. And just by just crossing the barriers of, of a form of freedom. I'm going to tell you something that sometimes is critical about being successful. The camera is somewhat of a narcotic. It's like a drug. Once you see yourself on television, you say, wow, I should have said that. It would have came along a lot better. If I should have looked more on this side, I would have saw a better side of me. You know, it's, a, it's believe it or not, it's a drug. You know what I mean? If, you're not, if it's not handled properly, you could lose your mind. I just saw a press conference interview with you, and you got mad. And I'll tell you what the question was. The question was, Mike Tyson, it came so easily for you. Everything was a home run in your career, and you got angry. And I know why you got angry, because it bothered you that people didn't respect your struggle. Listen, um, I, I can't even continue to go to tell you the situations I've been through in my life. Because I mean, someone see this article, and I tell you, to please come pick me up. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the fact is, you know, they don't understand. They don't understand my life. They don't understand the whole chemistry of my, my existence. You know what I mean? Or who I am or what I am. They say it came so the only thing they see is the finished product. 50 million here, 100 million, that's all they see. They don't see anything as a guy who came from absolutely the worst social circumstances in life and just eventually, I don't even know how to get it, met some good people. Bobby Stewart, Custom Models, some good people. Jimmy Jacobs. And Jimmy, they had no, listen, they had, listen, I was 12 years old. They can, you really think somebody could really see some talent in a 12 year old? Maybe Cuss could have, but I was 12 years old. And this guy put his life involved with a 12 year old kid that had no good intentions when I first came up there. And, you know, I would have been, it would have been beautiful if that he would have, he would have could have just seen my achievements. I mean, I've, no, I'm no fool. I know I've achieved, I achieved a lot. And I know who I am. And I know I can go around calling shots and people get me upset. And I can say, well, all right, make a phone call and buy the building and kick people. Well, listen, I, that's not what I'm about. I'm all about the people, you know, the people are just the humble people, the ordinary people. I'm no big shot. I try not to change as much where it's very difficult to. But the people that were my friends before, they're still my friends. And mm -hmm. the people, like I said, I don't like, I didn't like before, I still don't like them. Nothing's changed. What would you like people who are cynical or skeptical of you know about you? I know maybe it's not important what they know, but what would you, what would you wish they could know about you? I wish they could know if they're not smart enough to be my friend, f*** them. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the truth. Foot action. People say I've got so much foot action. Once I leave the blocks, my feet never touch the ground. Why? I guess we'll never know. Foot action's where to get the universe running shoe from Adidas. For every action, there's foot action.
And just like Shaq and just like Jordan, we've got our own shoe endorsement deals. When people think wingtips, we want people to think Gary Miller wingtips. The advertising is slick. You're a very animated character, so it makes sense to put you with an animated character. This is you, and this is Billy the Bear. That doesn't even look like me. No, no, this is you. The shoe companies know what they're doing. They wouldn't be coming after us if this wasn't working. Gary, Gary Miller, wouldn't you like to be in his shoes? Not much is really known about Mike Tyson away from the ring. We know he's had a tragic life, that he lost his mother, his sister, his guardian, and his first manager. We know he grew up on the mean streets of Brownsville, New York. But little, if anything, is known of Mike Tyson, the person. We tried to find out. In my mind, I don't need anyone anyway. You know what I mean? Regardless of how egotistical that may sound, mm -hmm. I really believe that. I don't need anybody. I can handle things on my, my own. Even though sometimes you might have to get the short end of the stick, I basically believe I don't need anybody. What makes your heart light? Yes, watching my daughter say something new. Or yes, my, my daughter Mikey calls me on the phone and says, and I say, what else you got to tell me? I got to go. I got to talk to John. I got to take care of some bills. What else do you got to tell me? Oh, I love you. I love you too. Thank you, Daddy. And I, you know, that's cool. I think, I think that's pretty cool. That could get you going for the whole day, couldn't oh, it? Oh, that's, that's, that's something. Do you like being a dad? Oh, uh, yeah. That's pretty awesome. How does it humble you? It's, um, I hate, um, when you have to get up in the morning, you hear the baby crying, and I have to nudge. You sleep with the baby? Huh? You sleep with the baby? No, I don't sleep with the baby. Every now and then we do. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I always nudge your mother. <laughs> and tell you, you gotta take the, you gotta take, um, <laughs> Get a diaper. <laughs> what do you want for your children? Um, you know, uh, my children, they have the opportunity to have a good life. They have Obviously. a good opportunity to have a good life. You know what I mean? Um, better more so than I am. I don't know. It's just, I just want to hope that they become good people and they survive their lives. You know what I mean? Because it's just difficult. I, you know, it's going to be new to me. I never dealt with kids that was in that particular situation. Kids that don't ever have to worry about going to the best schools if they have the proper um, ingenuity to get there. And it's just, um, it's very, it's different, it's new to me too. I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. Um, scholastically inclined and all that stuff. It's just, um, it's, it's so new that you gotta make sure your kids get into the best school. At least before I said, well, tell them to public school. But no, they have to go to private schools where they get the best education. You know what I mean? Sometimes. See, you know, it's interesting, Mike. you become conservative over the years. you become a guy who's become a fairly suspicious and sus suspect person about the world around you and you want to protect your kids from all of that you know you have to because um you know when you think about when people say well i want my kids to grow up like me we're lucky i'm lucky my son may not be lucky to survive what i survive my daughter may not be lucky to survive. i don't want them to be some radical nuts you know i don't want them to say well we're going to fight for this cause i want them to say yes sir no sir and yes go to school and i know people say you weren't like that but you they weren't like that. I know, but they may not be lucky <laughs> and be out there in the streets hustling. You know, I'm just so happy that they're in the situation financially, and they got a great, listen, um, they got a, got a father that cares about them, and they got a mother who's bright and intelligent and knows all um, the proper way of taking care of children. And what did I have? I had a mother who was alcoholic, and I had a father who was a pimp, a hustler in the streets. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's going to make them a better person than I am, but hopefully, from that situation, they get a better life than I had. Thanks. You're not you're not much of a sports fan outside of boxing, are you? No. Why? You don't like I the other know. sports? I'm I'm just I haven't been familiar with the other sports that I was in boxing. I've been in boxing since I was like 12 years old, so I didn't have enough chance to like, pick, you know, pick around and play sports. Because when I used to live in Brooklyn, I never played sports. Remember, you told me that once. I'm not an athlete. I'm nothing special. I used to know, I'm, know what I said, I used to, I'm not a Mike Tyson. If I was a fight fan, I wouldn't be my fan. I miss. I you wouldn't to, be your fan? No, I wouldn't be my fan. Why? I don't know, I wouldn't deal with, um, I don't know, it's just very difficult to say. I just wouldn't like the way that um, that whole situation goes as far as my life is concerned. Because sometimes I'm, um, I want to say this word without sounding so bizarre. I'm an overwhelming individual sometimes. You know what I mean? And too I, much. Yeah, and sometimes I'm too overwhelming. And sometimes I, guess I, I feel even um, back office for myself sometimes in that way. And that's why I sometimes I say, well, it's, it's just sometimes too complicated to deal with that show. It's why? Like, why? I'm, 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 because I'm, I think deep down the, the truer, the realer person is that person, the person who wants to do good but feels that he has to do 
bad so he can keep that image, the menacing Mike Tyson? No, I'm not menacing. I mean, on the contrary, I'm pretty um, considerate and loving towards my children and my wife. But um, the fact is, um, that's just not realistic. No one's Lily White. No one's perfect. And I just, I don't want to be put in that category. You know what I mean? Because at times, if I'm upset, I'm, I'll, I'll fight. I'll, I'll strike someone or something. Someone upset me to the degree I feel threatening for my life, for my children. I'll strike somebody. And um, may do worse than that. But the fact is, um, I'm just out here surviving. And I just want to take care of my kids. It's a fantastic five for the Chicago Bulls. Celebrate the Bulls winning ways forever in this full-packed video. Chicago Bulls 1996-97 NBA Championship Season. Plus, this limited edition Bulls five-time champions sports watch. Both free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Your free video shows how the Bulls did it their way. Your five-time champion sports watch reminds you of all the good times. It just keeps on winning. What time is it? Both these sensational Bulls collectibles are free when you order 54 issues of SI for only $1.48 an issue. Save over 57% off the cover price. Use your credit card and you also get this special bonus, the SI Bulls Commemorative. Call now and get the ultimate Bulls collector set free from SI. There's no team like the Bulls and there's nothing in the world like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. Mike Tyson, a student of boxing and of warriors. He is part of the sports history and is fascinated by the world's history. Alexander the Great. The baddest cat there is. You know why? The fact is, he was just a boy and he took over most of the world as it was known. Did, did you read Did you read all you could get your hands on? That oh, was, everything. Yeah. You know he was gay. Did you yeah, know? I, listen, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> um, I'm just telling you, okay? How do you know? I never read anything about him being gay. <laughs> That's what I hear. Well, listen, can I tell you, he kicked a lot. This gay guy kicked a lot of ass, all right? <laughs> Is it, that's that what you like most about him? That he yeah. kicked it? <laughs> I don't care what he does. He got the job done. <laughs> well, I'm more interested in mostly in not why somebody's doing something, but just what will cause them to do it. You know what I mean? Like, you see a guy climbing a mountain. I'm not interested in that. But I, I would watch it to find out what would make this guy want to climb that mountain. Why? What is the purpose of him climbing this mountain, Mount Everest? Why do you want to climb this? And you know the possibility you can't come back down. And you know the history of the climbing this mountain. The 90% of the people, if not more, have died climbing this mountain. Why would you want to do it? So why do you climb the mountain? Why do you get in that ring? I want to know why. Hey, no one can really tell. I can tell you that well because I love it and I've been doing it all my life. And sometimes it's just like, um, who knows, it's like a clock that just keeps ticking. You know that story about the elephant that you put the chain on his, on his leg around the pole and he just keeps going around the pole, then you take the chain off and he doesn't know the chain's off and he just keeps going around the pole out of habit. And sometimes you just think it's out of habit. But that's, that's joyless. That's just habit. No, that's not, that's not true. That's not true. Habit is repetitious. Repetitious is done out of consideration and out of desire. I'm cried out, man. I cried so many times, I man. I can't cry anymore. I get mad. I pray. I may curse. I may quote the Quran. You know what I mean? There's, there's different um, verbals here, but I'm just me. You know what I mean? I get upset. You know what I mean? I like to laugh. You know what I mean? I love my children. I may get angry at them. Sometimes I'm angry at my wife. Sometimes I'm just, um, I'm just human. You know what I mean? The everyday guy. I can't imagine somebody being jealous of me if they wanted my life. A lot of people couldn't have, they would kill themselves if they had my life. You gotta do this, come on, take the hat off. Now look at this. This, that little bald spot there, that's from worry? Who told you it was from Stress, worry? it's from stress. How do you know? Because you told me. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's from stress, and then that started from the, the bone crusher no, Smith that, You know, my doctor told me that that's what it was from. What do you want people most to remember about you as a fighter, but more importantly as a man? You know what I mean? I, you know, I, don't, I never been concerned with what someone thought about me. I just, uh, I just live my life. You know what I mean? I just try to live my life. I can't, you know what I mean? It's, it's up to people to basically have their opinion what they think about me. I can't say, well, you think I'm a good guy, and I, you know, you can't go around and go on a survey. What do you think about me? What do you think? You know, what the hell? I'm living my life. 110,000 rooms are sold out here in Las Vegas Fight Weekend. That includes 5,000 rooms here at the MGM Grand. Both fighters guaranteed $30 million to do battle. ESPN's coverage with Charlie Steiner and the rest of the ESPN team will air throughout Fight Week. Enjoy the fight. Thanks for watching. I'm Roy Firestone. See you next month, everybody.